Hi everyone. Uh, the next big topic of our course is that of fair division. And so the goal of this video is to introduce the topic of fair division and then to focus specifically on something called the adjusted winner procedure. So think first about some of your personal experiences. What are some of the experiences that you have had in dividing objects? Maybe you had a roommate at some point, um, and when you moved out, you had to divide up some of the objects that you had collected while you were living together. Um, maybe you experienced a family dispute over an inheritance and items that needed to be split, or even parents going through a divorce and having to decide how items would be split. Um, maybe you have a parent who is a teacher and therefore you followed closely um, the teacher strikes um, and those issues that had to be divided up. How in your experience uh, was the dispute you're interested in resolved? And did you feel that you were treated fairly? What aspects of the experience led to a sense of fairness or unfairness? We're going to start with a little bit of criteria that can be used to judge fairness. The first criteria is called proportionality, and it says that each of the n parties in a dispute is entitled to at least one nth of the total bundle. A second criteria to judge fairness is called envy freeness. In envy freeness, we can say that each party believes that he or she has received the most valuable portion of the division or no party believes that he or she could do any better by trading his or her portion for someone else's. A third criteria is called efficient or Pareto optimal, meaning that no other allocation achieved by any other means whatsoever can make any one player better off without making some other player worse off. And our final criteria to consider is called equitable. Each player believes that he or she received the same fractional part of the total value. Now these four criteria are just things to keep in the back of our minds, um, ways that we can judge whether or not a division is said to be fair. One example of a division procedure is called divide and choose. Um, in divide and choose, one party divides the object into two parts in any way that he desires, and the other party chooses whichever part she wants. Now, this method was famously used in a Jif peanut butter commercial. You can actually Google uh, this commercial and watch it. There are two little boys uh, fighting over the last piece of a peanut butter sandwich um, and the mom wisely uses the divide and choose method. She has one of the boys uh, cut uh, the piece of bread into two pieces um, and the second child gets to choose whichever piece he wants first. Um, now the divide and choose method from a mom's perspective or anyone else's as a matter of fact is a great fair division procedure. It is proportional, it's envy free, it's efficient and equitable. So it meets all four of our criteria. But the rest of this video we're going to focus on another procedure besides divide and choose for dividing items. And it's the procedure called the adjusted winner procedure. So here we're given a discrete set of items. These could be physical objects like if you and your roommate move out and you've got to divide up um, a TV and a radio and whatever else, so physical items. Or it could be issues. We talked about the teacher strike. So having to decide how you're going to split up issues of class size and classroom resources and pension, right? So it could be physical items or just other issues um, that need to be divided up. There are two interested parties with equal claim to the set of items and the adjusted winner procedure provides a method to divide up these items among the interested parties in a way that both will consider fair. Now it might happen that one item will need to be divided among the two parties and we'll talk about what that might mean in practicality as we go through the example. So the example we're going to focus on for the rest of this video um, is the 1991 divorce of Ivana and Donald Trump. It was widely covered in the media and their marital assets included a 45 room mansion in Greenwich, Connecticut, a 118 room Mar-a-Lago mansion in Palm Beach, Florida, 
an apartment in the Trump Plaza, a 50-room Trump Tower triplex, and over a million dollars in cash and jewelry. Now, Ivana and Donald each have equal claims to the assets, and they decide that they're going to use the adjusted winner procedure to divide up these items among themselves. So the first step of the procedure is that each of the two parties is going to distribute a total of 100 points among the given items. Now, higher point assignments means that an item is valued more by that party. So we're going to assume um, that Donald and Ivana have distributed their 100 points as you see here, right? So they were each given 100 points. They go into separate rooms, they divide their 100 points however they like among the items in question, and the items that they want more, they're going to give more points to. All right, so that's step one. In step two, each item is initially given to the party that assigned it more points. So, for example, the Connecticut estate will go to Ivana because she assigned it more points, 38 versus 10. The Palm Beach Mansion initially goes to Donald because he assigned that item more points, 40 versus 20. The Trump Plaza apartment will go to Ivana, and the Trump Tower triplex will go to Donald. Because the cash and jewelry um, was awarded the same number of points between the two parties, we're going to hold off on that item for just a moment. Okay, so the item is initially given to the party that assigned it more points, and then we add up the total number of points each party feels that he or she has received. So Donald feels currently that he has been awarded 78 of his points. Ivana, on the other hand, feels that she has only been awarded 68 of her points. All right, now what about that cash and jewelry? Well, the party with the fewest points is going to be given all the items on which both parties place the same number of points. So, since Ivana initially has fewer points than Donald, she is going to win that item of cash and jewelry. So, that will bump her up to 70 points. Okay, now, generally, the point totals received by each party will not be equal as is this case, right? Donald currently feels like he has gotten 78 points. Ivana only feels that she has 70. So it's not yet a fair distribution. The totals listed at the bottom of the table indicate the total points received by each party according to that party's initial point distribution. Now note that the point values are based on that party's valuation of a given item. Now, because the point totals are not equal, we will now begin to transfer items or a part of one item from one party to the other to equalize the point totals. So our ultimate goal is for Donald and Ivana to walk away with the same number of points. That's how we will decide that the distribution has been fair. Okay, so in step three, for each item given to the initial winner, we're going to calculate what's called the point ratio. Now, the point ratio is just a division, A's valuation divided by B's valuation, where A is the party with the greater point total, in this case, Donald. Notice that because we're only going to be transferring items from Donald, our initial winner, to Ivana, our initial loser, we're only going to calculate point ratios for items belonging to Donald. So, for the two items belonging to Donald, we calculate the point ratios. So, for the Palm Beach Mansion, we take Donald's points of 40 divided by Ivana's points of 20 and get a point ratio of 2. And for the Trump Tower Triplex, we take Donald's points of 38 and divide by 10 to get a point ratio of 3.8. We're going to start moving items from that initial winner, in this case Donald, to the initial loser, in this case Ivana, in ascending order of point ratios. And we'll stop when we get to an item whose move will cause the initial winner to have fewer points than the initial loser. This item will need to be split or shared, and thus is called the shared item. Okay, so when we look at our point ratios of two and 3.8,
because two is the smallest number, we're going to focus first on the Palm Beach Mansion. Now, if we transferred that entire item, the entire Palm Beach Mansion from Donald to Ivana, that would drop Donald down to having only 38 points and would bump Ivana all the way up to 90 points. Therefore, Donald, our initial winner, would suddenly now become the loser. So we're not going to be able to transfer that entire item. Instead, that's the item that will need to be shared. We're going to use an algebraic procedure to find the fraction x of the Palm Beach Mansion that will be transferred from Donald to Ivana. So let x be the fraction of the mansion that Donald will keep, and therefore 1 minus x, whatever's left over, will represent the fraction that Ivana will receive. For example, if x happened to be 2 thirds, then 1 minus x would be 1 third. In the transfer of the mansion, Donald is going to keep 40 times x points from the chest, and Ivana will receive 20 times 1 minus x points. Notice the 40 coming from the 40 points that Donald initially awarded the Palm Beach Mansion, and the 20 for Ivana coming from the 20 points that she initially awarded the Palm Beach Mansion. Note that Ivana currently has 70 points. She gets to keep the three items she has, the Connecticut estate, the apartment, the cash and jewelry. Those are Ivana. She has won those. No one's taking them away from her. So she for sure gets to keep those 70 points. And then she's going to receive some of that shared item. So 20 times 1 minus x points from the shared item of the Palm Beach Mansion. Donald, on the other hand, he has won the Trump Tower triplex, so he for sure is going to get those 38 points, plus he's going to get to keep some portion of the shared item, the mansion, which is represented by 40x. We want them to end up with an equal number of points, and so to equate the point totals, we're going to write the following equation. We've got Ivana's points of 70 plus 20 times 1 minus x. We want that to equal Donald's points of 38 plus 40 times x. Now we need to do a little bit of algebra. So we've got Ivana's points and Donald's points. We want them to end up with the same number. So we start by simply distributing or multiplying that 20 through. So we'll have 70 plus 20 minus 20x equals 38 plus 40x. Adding the 70 and 20, we get 90 minus 20x equals 38 plus 40x. When we add the 20x over, that'll give us 60x on the right. When we subtract the 38, that will give us 52 on the left. Dividing, we see that x is 52 divided by 60, or 13 fifteenths. Therefore, Donald will keep 13 fifteenths of the mansion, and Ivana will get whatever's left over, 2 fifteenths of the mansion. Now notice the significance of the solution to this equation. Given our equation, if x equals 13 fifteenths, then each side ends up with 72.667 points. So each party will receive an equal number of points. And this is where the adjusted winner procedure ends. With a partial transfer of the mansion, all of the items have been divided in a way that each party will consider equitable. The result of the adjusted winner procedure is the distribution of items as shown in the table. Donald gets the Trump Tower triplex and 38 fifteenths of the Palm Beach Mansion. Ivana gets the Connecticut Estate, the Trump Plaza Apartment, Cash and Jewelry, and 2 fifteenths of the Palm Beach Mansion. Now, in a case like this where we're sharing an item, Probably that means monetary value. Probably they would figure out the actual cost or value of the mansion, and Donald would either keep the mansion entirely and pay Ivana um, the two fifteenths of what the mansion is worth, or they could split it up entirely and he keep 13 fifteenths of the value and she received two fifteenths. 
It's also possible if it's a um, vacation home that they could literally split up uh, how many weeks out of the year each party receives. That's possible, um, but more likely they would probably go with the monetary value. All right, so that's all for this video. Thanks so much. Bye, guys.